For Krimi Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is Captain Ben Boyson, co-author of On the Devil's Trial, How I Hunted the Kruka Storm Killers That Robbed South Africa. The Kruka Storm killings of 11 people between 2012 and 2016 was also referred to as satanic killings, which left the residents of Kruka Storm in the West Rand in Gauteng, living in consistent fear. So briefly, give our viewers some background into those cases. Actually, not sat- satanic killings. The only satanic person here was Cecilia Stein. And um, actually, th- she convinced the, the people to kill the other people in the name of God. So they were a Christian cult. Um, so they were not uh, satanic um, at all. But, you know, um, because of Cecilia, everybody thinks uh, it, that the other people were also satanic. Um, killers but uh, yeah um, Cecilia uh, convinced a lot of people around her that she is a big Satanist that came out of the satanic church and um, she was married to to the devil she even got a marriage certificate that she was married to the devil and then um, she got this group of people around her that was looking after for 24 hours a day. Um, she cannot be alone because if she's going to be alone, the devil is going to rape her and uh, bring her back to the satanic church. And so she she got all these people so in close uh, proximity of her that they were there basically the whole day. If they weren't at work or at school, they were at her place. And she only showed them um, a gruesome uh, videos of, of of serial killers and by telling them um, all this the stuff that she told them she totally took their minds and yeah eventually um, when Ria left uh, she wanted to punish Ria but she cannot punish Ria by killing Ria because then Ria is not punished so she started killing people around Ria that was 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 good for Ria and was close to Ria. She actually also wanted to to kill Ria uh, Grunewald's son and daughter, but luckily the daughter was overseas and the guy was supposed to kill Ria's son. He eventually ran away and and ran to the police and gave the police all the information uh, what was happening, what was going to happen. And um, yeah, then the 2012 police, I don't know what they did, but they took all these people in protective custody. um, uh, The... The guy who was supposed to kill Ria Frunewald's son and his girlfriend, and eventually released him and said, "Yeah, there's no case. Nothing happens after that." And then the 2015 and 16 killing spree happened, and that was only for money. And you made headlines when you arrested Cecilia. So can you explain to us why you took the case and why you wanted to work alone in investigating this case? I never asked for the case. Um, Brigadier Victor was in charge of a task team at the West Rand investigating this case. But you must rem- remember, when you take a lot of policemen to be part of a task team, they still got the other work that they need to do. So it's difficult then just to run on, on one specific case. So then he phoned me and asked me if, I, if I'm if i prepared to be part of the task team. And I said, no, um, I don't work like that. Um, even in the old days, um, when we we were detectives, you get your docket and you and you investigate your docket by your own. You take all the statements from all the witnesses, and then there's a golden thread that doesn't disappear um, at the end of the day. Um, but if there's too much policemen taking statements, you know, vital evidence can get lost because what's vital to me is not vital to you. He said it's fine, and um, I took the the cases over. And it took me about four months to get hold of all the cases because not all of the policemen were happy to to give their their dockets to me. But eventually I got everything and and then I ran out in on my own. And you described Cecilia as a clown in your interview. Can you tell us more on this? She entertains herself a lot. When I got warrants of arrest for them and uh, I asked Colonel Gert um, Kruger, uh, that he and his and his members go and, and arrest her with um, Colonel Werner von Staden. Um, you know, when they took photos of her in the cells, she made um, money ears and made jokes. And it was like it was a big joke for her. But also, I think because nothing happened in the 2012 cases, I think they thought that they're going to get away this time again. And she took everything for a joke. But till 
you know, I charged them with the fraud of discovery first to get them just out of out of society because I didn't know how many um, evidence was hidden somewhere, and I needed to to get them out so they can't get rid of evidence. So I, when I charged them and I took them out there and they asked for bail and they didn't get bail and everything and I eventually charged them with murder and conspiracy to commit murder and robbery and all that kind of stuff then they saw that now it's it's becoming a real life you know it's not a joke anymore but um yeah she 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 thinks because she can manipulate certain people you know she can manipulate all of 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 the people so and um, yeah didn't work with me luckily i've got uh, two very good prosecutors from the high court that did the case and also the judge um i think uh, you know, Electus Pedaeus is most chosen by God. And I think the real Electus Pedaeus here was me, the two advocates, the prosecutors and the judge. I think God put all of us together to see that, that this case can go through court. And talk to us more on how your career as a cop began and what led to you being a successful cop who solved one of the country's biggest criminal cases in recent history. I grew up on on the mines in 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 the country. My father was a, a mine worker, and so I I was not even one year in in a school. Um, so I was in fourteen different schools during my my school career, and uh, eventually in standard nine, um, I just decided that you know what this traveling is not working for me anymore, and I I decided I want to be a policeman. So I I, I became a policeman and. Uh, I was in the riot units in the 80s and then in the reaction units. And then eventually in, in the 80s, I became a detective because it was a passion for me to investigate criminal cases. I'm that kind of person that all of my cases, even if it's bicycle theft, I investigate all of that cases if it was the biggest cases that I ever investigated. So and I, I'm very open-minded and I'm very meticulous in, in, in what I do. And I learned a lot from being in court always with with all my court cases listening to prosecutors and advocates and and and, and even lawyers asking um, policemen questions and catching them up by not doing their work properly so with all that um, eventually um, i became a, a good detective and can you tell us more about the appointment matters which involved the brutal strangling of insurance brokers they started in 2015 because they ran out of money because only Marinda and Zach Valentine was was uh, earning money of of the lot of them. So um, and eventually Zach left Discovery and he, and he started his own business and he took money from a lot of people. He didn't give them their money back and then they knew that they are in trouble. Um, so then. Uh, uh, um, Don Barnard came with the story that they must um, rob the Myers because the Myers is going to build this big place in KwaZulu Natal and they, he's got a lot of money and he's got 10 million in his house. And then they went there and, and there was no money and eventually they killed the Myers, but their vehicle was picked up there. So uh, eventually they, they took statements from Zach and from Marinda and they said there, are, there were other people and the people were fighting and they left and then. The policeman who were doing the case at that stage said he, he wants them to do a polygraph. And Marina did a polygraph and she filed it. But Zach didn't know if he's also going to file it, there's going to be problems. And then he decided now it's time to die. So then he got that other guy and killed him, um, burned him in his vehicle. Then he was in hiding. And the problem is because he's a diabetic, and they needed to give him medicine. And they can't take him to a doctor because he's dead. So, and they didn't earn a lot of money because now it's only Marinda earning any 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 money. So, um, yeah, then they decided to, they must uh, rob because Leroux, uh, Marinda's son, who used to work with Zach, know a little about uh, insurance broking and stuff like that. And then they decided they need to phone insurance brokers and, and lure them to the house and then, then get their, their, their bank cards and and um, forced them to give them the 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 pin numbers and um, started killing them. So when I eventually asked him when would it stop, he said it was too easy. Uh, we wouldn't have stopped. Luckily, you caught us. 
And you also arrested um, Eugene Terreblanche after he came to Kruka's door with journalist Yanni Allen. Can you tell us more on this? Yeah, um, he and um, Yanni Allen had a affair in Kruka's door and they were caught. And then um, Michael Marner sent me to, to took Yanni Allen's statement um, about it. And eventually there was a warrant of arrest for for Eugene Terblance and the policeman didn't want to go and arrest him and yeah so I said that what's the problem you know I will arrest anybody <laughs> I don't care um, who I arrested if there's a warrant of arrest that's why you're a policeman you're not supposed to to give people favors or to be scared about it so I went to Pretoria to where the officers were he was not there and I asked the people where is he and they said there yeah, is eating out uh, in, 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 in Brooklyn he gave me the address and I went there and I arrested him while he was eating, but I let him finish eating first and then I brought him to, to Krugersdorp and uh, yeah, then he went through the process. And as a person who resigned four times from the South African Police Service, can you tell us what always brought you back to the uh, Police Service after resigning? I think I'm a, I'm, I'm a born police officer, you know, since now that I'm also on, on pension, I just want to get in my car and go back to the police and, and do investigating. Um, it's very difficult for me to, to sit at home and, and my wife still being a police officer, you know, every morning she put on a uniform and, and go to work. It's, it's, like, it's like a drug. It's like heroin or something. I'm, I'm, I'm addicted to it. So in every time that I left the police, I left the, the police um, because of reasons and I couldn't stay at that stage. So, and when the reason was gone, then I applied to go back and they took me back every time. So, but also I think that is also the way that God assists me there. Because for a, for a, for a policeman to, to be back in the police force five times, I think I'm the only cop in the history of the South African police who the police took back five times. But, you know, I was in a car accident and I was declared dead by Brad's Ambulance Services. And... Um, I stayed alive and you know there's a lot of reasons in your head that you think but but why am i still alive and why what is my my purpose on earth i think this was one of my purposes that god wanted me to do is is to be in the police when this happened and and arrest these people and and see with with the, the, the prosecutors that justice um, uh, is served and in your book you also say that you do not like telling the story because it breaks your heart. Can you briefly talk to us more on how your bosses at the Hawks treated you? It was disappointing the way they, they, they treated me. Um, and it's all because, you know, I, I used to work in anti-corruption and um, you get instructions to go and arrest certain people and then you need to do it. And then when other people being corrupt, um, then nothing happens and I, I was not in a, in a good place um, while working there and it was not fair for me that um, certain people yes they jump to certain people to, to being arrested like General Mglouli when they gave me his, his uh, docket to go and arrest him you know I'm a warrant officer but I must now go and, and, and arrest General Mglouli and I said no I, I first want to peruse the docket and when I peruse the docket I said no I'm not going to commit career suicide by arresting General Ndluli because there's, there's no proof in that docket that he killed his girlfriend's husband. So, yeah, and then, you know, we were fighting a lot about that and, and then there was other people that is really corrupt and there's proof that they are corrupt and nothing happened. So, yeah, eventually I had a big fight with, with my commander and um, I've been chased away from anti-corruption to a normal Hawks unit in, in Krugersdorp. And um, even they, um, the commander didn't want me there because she was um, very close to the Hawks head in, in Gauteng. When he was dismissed with General Dramat, you, it was open season for her also. And when, when, when they sent me there, she thought I was sent there to, to, punish, uh, to punish her. And she said, no, um, you can do what you want. You've got four years in the police service left, um, do what you want. Um, but um, I'm not going to assist you. So luckily then um, Brigadier Victor phoned me and he said, please, don't you want to come and, and um, do this investigation? Because just the previous year, I was for the second time in my police career, um, on the, in that December of the previous year, I was chosen as the best detective in, in Gauteng and the 
second best detective in, in, in the Hawks country. So yeah, things change very quickly uh, if you don't jump to certain people's pipes in the best detective, you, you easily uh, has been seen as the worst detective ever because you don't want to do certain stuff. Uh, and and it, it was just disappointing. My last five years in the police was very disappointing for me. Um, the way that I've been treated. I don't appreciate good police officers. And there are a lot of good police officers currently in the country. Um, they, just, they just didn't get the exposure that I did uh, with, the, with the crews of killings case. But um, yeah, and I, I think management in the police needs to start looking at, at, at police officers that is good and, and look after them. And lastly, what are you hoping people take away after reading this book? You know, I, I think everybody that reads the book will get something out of it. You know, police officers um, reading my book will will see, you know, um, how desperate I was or in my investigation to, to be a good in, investigating officer. And um, you must be open-minded. And I think the public also... If they read the book, um, they will see that not all, all policemen are, are criminals. And um, that, you know, we're not a lot of, of police officers in the police. You know, we are 180,000 police officers in the country and 40,000 of those people are, are people working in an offices. And then you've got the riot units and the detective branches and uh, local criminal record centers and ballistic forensics. So eventually the police officer that, that's doing crime in the country or fighting crime in the country is about 45 and working in charge offices and, 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 and attending to, to complaints. And those 45,000 policemen is divided into three shifts. So at the end of the day, you, you sit with maybe 17, 18,000 police officers on a daily basis that is attending to crime in the whole of the country. And that's actually totally ridiculous um, because detectives uh, they work when a crime is committed so they don't prevent crime they investigate crime and um, the other people you know is, is, is at forensic and ballistic and court duties and cell duties they're not really policemen that's out on the street fighting crime i need i think the, the government need to look after that in and getting more policemen in the police force that is the 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 passion and the, that they can assist in in in, in towns um, you know you can go to any police station now and and ask how many people is is active on duty to attend to complaints and then after that you ask that police station how many vehicles is out there to to attend to that complaints and then you do you ask, you go to the municipality and ask the municipality how, how many people is, is living in, in your area. And then you, you look at the, the amount of police and the amount of people. And then it, it's just mind boggling that the government and, and even the public thinks that um, there is enough police to, to govern crime in this country. It's, it's not possible because crime is currently out of hand and it's becoming worse. That was Captain Ben Boyson speaking to Krima Media's policy about On the Devil's Trial, how I hunted the Krukastorp killers that rocked South Africa.